Welcome, esteemed viewers, to our channel. A quick reminder to subscribe for more insightful content. Today we delve into the ongoing saga of Queen Camilla's frequent absences from royal engagements. In recent weeks, Camilla has pulled out of a number of official duties, citing a persistent viral infection. However, the frequency of these absences has begun to raise eyebrows, prompting some to question the validity of her illness. This isn't a question of doubting someone's health concerns, but rather a question of the commitment to the royal duty. Each time Camilla cancels her appearance at an event, it doesn't just leave an empty chair. It leaves a question mark over the dedication she pledged to the crown and the people. Camilla's role as a member of the royal family is not merely ceremonial. It carries with it a responsibility, a commitment, an obligation to represent the monarchy and, by extension, the United Kingdom on the global stage. It's a commitment that should not be taken lightly, and certainly not one that can be shrugged off at the first sign of a sniffle. This pattern of recurrent absences can't help but tarnish the perception of the royal family. It suggests a lack of commitment, a disregard for the importance of these engagements. And when the royal family's reputation is on the line, every absence, every no-show counts. In this age, where the monarchy's relevance is continually under scrutiny, can it afford such frequent absences, such apparent indifference? This isn't just about Camilla, it's about the image of the royal family as a whole. It's about the message it sends to the people of the United Kingdom and the world at large. With her latest no-show at the state visit by the Emir of Qatar, one can't help but question, is this a case of recurring illness or simply royal laziness? Moving on, let's delve into the role of the UK media in this narrative. The media, the great influencer of public opinion, appears to be offering a protective umbrella for Camilla. When we sift through news reports and articles relating to Camilla's recent absences, we find a tone that's largely sympathetic, almost nurturing. This tone is noticeable in how they report on her viral infection and the subsequent cancellations of her engagements. Terms such as forced to cancel and continues to suffer are employed to paint a picture of a woman battling against ill health rather than questioning the frequency of her no-shows. Secondly, the media has always had a love-hate relationship with the royals. They need each other, in a way. The media needs the royals for the stories, the glamour, the intrigue, and the royals need the media to maintain their public image and relevance. In this delicate dance, the media may be reluctant to shine an unflattering light on Camilla's frequent absences for fear of damaging this relationship. Or perhaps they're simply playing into the narrative of an aging royal, struggling with health issues, a narrative that garners sympathy and humanizes the royals in the public eye. However, one can't help but question if this sympathetic lens is obscuring the truth. Is it masking a pattern of laziness under the guise of ill health? Is the media, consciously or unconsciously, aiding in this deception? In conclusion, it seems the media is more than willing to provide a soft landing for Camilla's frequent absences. Whether this is due to a fear of appearing insensitive, a need to maintain a beneficial relationship, or an aim to humanise the royals, the result remains the same. The Duchess's frequent no-shows are being glossed over, and the public is left with a skewed perception. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room, the accusations of laziness. One can't help but wonder whether Queen Camilla's frequent absences from royal engagements are due to an actual viral infection, or simply a case of royal lethargy. To truly understand this, let's delve into her royal schedule, shall we? To begin, the royal schedule is not a walk in the park. It's filled with a plethora of engagements, official duties and public appearances, each requiring a significant amount of time, energy and commitment. However, if we compare Queen Camilla's schedule to that of other royals, we can see a striking disparity. It's not uncommon to find her missing from important events, such as the recent state visit by the Emir of Qatar. Her absence from the official welcome at Horse Guards Parade was conspicuous and noteworthy. And this is not an isolated incident. It's a pattern that has been repeating itself over time. One can't help but question, is this a result of her alleged illness or is it a manifestation of laziness? The impact of these frequent absences on the public's perception of the royal family is significant. The monarchy thrives on the dedication and commitment of its members. When one member consistently falls short, it can cast a shadow over the entire institution. The public expects their royals to be diligent and committed, 
and when these expectations are not met, it can lead to a loss of respect and admiration. If Queen Camilla's absences are indeed due to laziness, it could potentially tarnish the image of the monarchy. So what's the verdict here? Is Queen Camilla's frequent absence due to laziness? If so, it paints a rather unflattering picture of the fin. This is a question that only time and Queen Camilla's future actions can answer. For now, we can only observe and speculate. Lastly, let's explore the possibility that Camilla is playing the sympathy card. It's a tactic as old as time, really, and one that's often used when one seeks to deflect criticism or garner support. Consider the numerous instances where Camilla's illness has conveniently surfaced, leading to a wave of sympathy from the public. Take, for instance, the recent state visit by the Emir of Qatar. Camilla's absence from the official welcome at Horse Guards Parade due to her viral infection certainly drew a fair share of concern and well wishes. But beyond the immediate sympathy, what benefits might this tactic bring? Well, for starters, it's an effective way to deflect criticism. After all, it's not exactly in good taste to chastise someone when they're unwell, is it? This could very well be a clever strategy to avoid scrutiny over what some perceive as her laziness. Then there's the matter of public favour. It's no secret that sympathy can often lead to support. Even those who may have previously been critical of Camilla might find themselves softening their stance when faced with her apparent vulnerability. The human capacity for empathy is a powerful thing, and it's not beyond the realm of possibility that Camilla is tapping into this to win over the public. But here's the million-pound question. Is this sympathy-seeking behaviour genuine, or is it a calculated move? While we can't say for certain, it's worth noting that this pattern of illness, coinciding with key public engagements, does raise some eyebrows. So, is Camilla playing the sympathy card to gain favour? If so, it's a tactic that seems to be working, for now. But like all strategies, its effectiveness may wane over time, especially should the public begin to question its authenticity. And remember, in the world of royalty, perception is everything. To wrap up our discussion, let's take a moment to revisit the points we've explored today. The main focus has been the Miller and her series of unattended engagements. As we've discussed, her absences have been attributed to a viral infection, yet the frequency of these absences raises questions. Is it merely a case of ill health, or is there more to this story? We delved into the role of the media in this narrative. It appears that the press, for the most part, has been accepting of the reasons for not attending these events. Yet, one can't help but wonder if there is a degree of bias at play. Are they merely reporting the facts, or are they offering a protective shield? Then we moved on to the allegations of laziness. It's a strong accusation, but one that has been whispered in certain circles. We considered the possibility of the sympathy card. It's a tactic that has been employed by many in the public eye. Could it be that they're using her health issues to gain sympathy and deflect criticism? These are all questions that we, as observers, are left to ponder. It's important to remember that the answers may not be black and white. People are complex, and their motivations can be multifaceted. However, it is our aim to challenge the narrative and encourage critical thinking. Thank you for joining us in this critical analysis of Camilla's actions and behaviour. We don't claim to have all the answers, but we do believe in asking the tough questions. Our hope is that these discussions will spark your own curiosity and lead you to form your own informed opinions. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Until next time, stay informed and stay curious.